guys, I'm Victoria Beale and I'm delighted to welcome on my show today two wonderful people. Um, let me introduce you first to my co-host, Sheila Smith, who is the Expo Queen, hashtag Expo Queen. Sheila, how are you doing, my darling, today? I am doing great. I am lovely being lit up with my tiara. <laughs> Well, it uh, is Christmas. Well, yeah, yeah, and I am feeling festive. And we have a very special guest today. Um, I'm going to um, say my piece to our special guest in a few moments' time. Um, but Sheila's here to help me today because my webcam is broken. Yes, I've overused my laptop during <laughs> lockdown. I've interviewed too many people. And as of today, it broke. And why is that? Because I've got two very, very good-looking people looking at me but without further ado I'm going to hand over to Sheila who's going to introduce our guest. Sheila over to you my darling. Thank you very much Victoria. Hi Sandy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Are you okay? Very well. Great. Merry, Merry Christmas. Oh I know look at me in my tiara. Uh, every day I go to work in a tiara. Um, <laughs> so I've been looking at your social media and I noticed that you call your son Little Spice. I do. So, Tell me about when you were Little Spice and what it was like growing up as a Little Spice. I'm going to make this really short and sweet for you and I'm hoping that you've seen this movie because if you haven't seen this movie, it's going to be this whole point I'm going to make is going to be ruined. However, if you, have you seen a film called East is East? Yes, I have, yeah. Right? That's my life. <laughs> Go on, tell me more. The opening sequence of the 1970s street uh, in, in Salford, it just brought back so much memories of, of uh, an, Indian ki an Indian kid living in, in Manchester on a terrace cobble streets with an Irish community and a, a few Greeks and an Italians. And it was a very mixture of people. So there already was the start of something amazing with the food. The food yeah. like, is still a massive memory. Massive. I remember going to Mary, Mary O'Reilly's for a nice Irish stew, you know, um, yeah. going to the Pakistani ladies for a curry, the West Indian lady who would make rice and peas on a Friday, you know. So I know it, oh, the food was just was everywhere. So there you go. That's so what, what an education like. that was. That sounds so exciting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it must have been so exciting. So because I was going to ask you, um, if somebody wanted to start to cook with spices and start to experiment with spices, what would be your top tip for somebody just a keen amateur? Um, you know, like when, I don't know if it's, I can't tell you which animal this is, but you know, like certain birds of prey just let their uh, chicks just fall out of the, uh, the nest and let it right, fly. yeah. Obviously there's somebody, I don't know if there, there's, a, there's a somebody there to help them if they don't, don't fly, but the same synopsis with, with the spices, just suck it and see, just go for it. You, what's the worst that can happen? You get a meal that you don't like. But, yeah. but, but uh, nine times out of 10, <clears throat> most people roughly have a rough life. There's nobody out there that says, I can't cook. Oh, I don't like spices. I don't like this. Because when, we, when you start dissecting it, um, it's, it, spices are so massively in your life you don't realise so for example uh, just recently I was at the w, WI uh, we did something recently and um, it wasn't this recently tell, I'm telling lies it was last year it wasn't this year it's gone that quick I've, I've forgotten this year and uh, so I was at WI and we were talking about cakes and obviously as soon as they see me the spice guy and they see yeah who I am, automatically they just think, oh, it's a curry, you know, oh, it's a curry, you know, you know. And, uh, and, and basically uh, I said, right, so what do you put in that cake? And she goes, oh, we use this thing called star, star anise. Oh, and oh, we use this cinnamon and we use the list of spices for all these cakes. So I said, listen, if spices were taken away from you, Christmas would be cancelled. Yeah, about true. All the spices you have at Christmas. Yeah. And the British, um, have some beautiful spices that they have used because of the, the history, because mm -hmm. they, they ruled the earth at one point. So you imagine all those spices will be, will have entered into the culinary world. Yeah, so it's just everyday stuff now. It's so everyday, it's so everyday, again, you don't even realize it. Every no. restaurant, every table throughout the whole land has spices already on their table before they even begin a meal. And it has this right to be on the table before you even eat your meal. And I think yeah. that's yeah. how crazy 
Salt and pepper's already sat there waiting. There's you've, no just, you've just given me an idea, actually. I'm glad that you said about when you were at the WI and they saw the Spice Guy and they thought, ah, oh, this must be curry. <laughs> yeah? Um, so that made me think of where does the Spice Guy eat out? What's your top restaurant? If, if it was your birthday and I said, come on, let's go and have lunch for your birthday, where would you go? Um, there was a time when I was... Um, when I was earning a little bit more money. So I was able to go once in a while to London and go to some top restaurants and literally go to a, a well-renowned restaurant um, who I know um, will have achieved some rosettes, some AA stars, and know that I'm going to get a decent meal. It's been very rare that I will have got not a good meal. So I don't mind paying for that. Um, everyday kind of food, we're always in the mood for something a bit different. There was a time before I changed my lifestyle that I would have fish and chips you know i love for, fish and chips. for example i mean yeah if I, go, if I go to the seaside i, I still do <laughs> don't, I'll come tell with. Don't, don't tell me one um but don't yeah <laughs> um but yeah this, i eat just as like everybody else but what i don't do anymore is i don't um i don't eat out as much to restaurants uh, even before lockdown yeah. and, and it's it's okay. i don't know if you if, if i dare say it but the quality is crap Right, yeah, if that's how you feel, it's how you feel. Uh, where I live, where I live uh, in Leicester, the quality, and I've said it before, is, is shocking. It's absolutely shocking. And uh, I don't tend to be the one who highlights how bad the food and the service, because I, I can put up with bad food. Do you know that? I can actually put up with bad food, but I can't put up with bad service. I know that. exactly what you mean. Do you know, as an event planner, I am the worst person to go to an event. You don't want me as your guest. <laughs> because I, I am finding fault with girls who haven't tied their hair up and oh. dirty glasses lining up on the bar. And, and I, I, so I know exactly where you are coming with yeah. that. What do you think, Victoria? Well, <clears throat> what I think is um, with regard to the spice side of things, I must admit, turmeric, garam masala, cinnamon, cumin, I eat those things on a daily basis. And I'll tell you why, because the health benefits, never mind the taste and the flavours, the health benefits that people do not realise if they put those things into their diet on a daily basis. Ask me when the last time I had a cold or if I had flu. Yeah. Or why did, why did my daughter got coronavirus and she lives in the house with me, but I didn't get it. Now, I'm not saying... You know, if someone picks me up on this, <laughs> that the spices get rid of coronavirus. But I haven't had a, a, a cold during this entire period. In fact, I haven't had a cold for about four years since mm -hmm. I started using those spices on a daily basis. And, and so, if you think about when winter time comes, we all start talking about hot toddies and yeah, and uh, uh, honey and, and leather. Turmeric tea. Tum Look tum at my turmeric tea. Yeah, yeah, I and, drink that. I love it. And, I, and, and and back in the day, there used to be a lot of. Um, Again, in the British, we used to have turmeric. I know a lot of older people that would have turmeric in milk. It was, mm. it was done. It, it, turmeric it, latte. Yeah. yeah. Before, yeah. before Costa and Starbucks started making this fancy stuff. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, I mean, what I'm really interested to know now is, obviously, because I'm camless today, <laughs> I've, I've just taken a photograph that was actually taken a year ago to the day. Um, which I didn't know until this morning when it came up on my Facebook feed. Wow. So I was very happy surprise. Yeah. Wow. Um, and this is the first time I'd met you properly. And mm. why was that? Because you very kindly agreed to sponsor with your wonderful cookery skills and canapes, um, an event I was very honoured to um, produce at um, Masterpiece Art Gallery in Holland Park. And as you can see in the photograph, there's yourself, there's Annette from Masterpiece Art, there's me, and there's Toller Bashir, who was one of the other sponsors. Unfortunately, we can't see Mark and Alex in the photo. It's, they've been chopped out, but they're there as well. Alex, Alex is too tall anyway. He, he wouldn't see him anyway. <laughs> but, they, but these guys um, were hosting uh, David Bowie's works of art, the late, great David Bowie. And um, I needed... I asked, I think I went out on Facebook and asked for keto canapes, didn't I? Yeah, you did. And you came back and you, we started talking. And do you know what? I mean, I have to say, if anyone's listening to this, first of all, if you fancy um, a private chef 
or we have an event when we're allowed to do events again. But let's talk about private chefing because that, that's more realistic to happen. Yeah. You have no hesitation. You have to get Sandy over to your house to, to cook for your family, for your friends, your bubble of six or whatever we're allowed to do. <laughs> because he's absolutely phenomenal. Um, the preparation, the attention to detail. When this photograph was taken, he'd actually brought down a, um, some demonstrations, some um, tasters that we were going to try out before the event itself, just to make sure that everything was perfect on the night. Um, so that's the attention to detail and how meticulous he is. And we can did I, the event. Can I just interject there to use, yes. just, to, just to use something? And it's yes. quite, quite poign it's really poignant because I really want to say this and I was just feeling it. When I was speaking about East is East earlier, and we all, we had, me and Sheila were having a little bit of a laugh and a giggle, which it is, obviously, it's a funny film and it's a funny lifetime. But more importantly, um, it's where I also got learned discipline and mm. honour and also the words that we said, we've forgotten. And I, and I talk about these a lot in my personal social feeds, but my father, you imagine he was a, an Asian shopkeeper in the 70s. He had to do everything above mm. and beyond. And it was, a, it was a, the first ever self-service shop you think uh, open all hours right so my dad came along with his with his brothers and opened up oh self-service oh my god self-service <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and my dad used to work so hard and um uh, there is a link where i'm going with this and it's basically you, you mentioned attention to detail i don't realize i'm even doing it mm. i don't even realize i'm doing it um and my father would would, would kick off over the smallest things and at the time it would make me feel upset uh, thinking about it but now I understand like if Mrs O'Reilly didn't have her her harvest bread ready at 9 a.m in the shop for her to collect mm. it, it'd be failure it'd be failure because he was a, not yeah. just a shopkeeper he was a community service yeah you know? and and we were doing deliveries before before all these delivery guys turned up we were, I remember delivering um ham quarter of ham to to jason's mum's house to bread do you know do you know where i'm going so that mm. detail is just a little bit old-fashioned that's all it is i think it's definitely from our generation guys you know and uh, don't get me started on this subject <laughs> <laughs> we haven't we haven't got time but we'll have a talk about that another time um with the youth of today but um i think you're right sandy it is that it does come natural to you and i, I want you to tell us about what's happened since January when we did that event um, from the, from the night of the event, if you can remember that far, it was only beginning of this year. Would of you course. believe? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> well, well, obviously I, I left my job as being like corporate and everything. And I wanted to find myself and do something. And, and you know what, that cliche, it's such a cliche, but it's also a very poignant cliche. Do what you love. You know, guys, if people are hopefully watching this, on, on different social medias and websites, hopefully watch it. I cannot, the one thing I can say to you is do something you love. If yeah. you do that, you're already halfway there. You're already halfway there. And I did that. And then by, by the grace of God, if you want to call it that, or the powers of, of attraction, whatever you want to call it, I met wonderful people, yourself, Victoria, Sheila, the list goes on and on. And then from that, because of my personality, I've, I've always had this personality. It's never been not, there it's always been there um new doors opened up and then from meeting you and doing what i did and again being that northerner i'm, a, I'm an, an i'm an indian northerner look at that charm eh and no <laughs> it's like coronation street meets i can't think of anything else but it meets something um, <laughs> and, it, and it's that hospitality it's hospitality yeah and that's all it is and because of that it's it's natural networking so you naturally network, you naturally genuinely go, you know, it's my mum. My mum's taught me that. You know, if you, if we, if the three of us went out for a night out in Manchester and we turned up at my mum's house at three o'clock in the morning, I'll guarantee she'll cook us some food. Guarantee it. So, I'm oh, going to hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not now, she's a bit old. It, that was the kind of hosp, and it was... Mm. It was one of my mates houses that kind of thing maybe, well maybe not one of my mates houses because if you got in that late she would kick off but that's you, you know where i'm coming from with this yeah and that is a bit of northern soul yes yes so, so tell us about the last 12 months then sandy what's so, been going on what's been going on oh it's been a roller coaster so this northern charm has just uh, uh, just allowed me to open up doors and meet people that i never thought i'd meet and 
Um, obviously, some things I can't say just at the moment because I'm still working sure. on stuff. But um, uh, I do work with some couple of celebrities in London um, because of the fact that COVID has kicked in. It's just knocked me out of uh, allowing to do me to do what I want to do, which is the private dining scene. It's basically elite private dining. Um, it's something that I really, it really actually enjoy doing. Um, it's stressful because I put myself in stress for it because I want it to be, I want each guest to walk away from that and go, wow. wow. Like in every level from the way the table was designed to the food, to the experience. And I realize now that I'm actually not a chef. I de dare I say it, I'm not a chef. I'm not, I'm not no. a chef. I always thought I was. And it's only recently that I realized I'm not a chef, I'm an entertainer. I just happen to bring food to the table and I'm good at cooking because there's lots of good chefs out there. There's chefs who are actually better than me, much better than me. However, they're not me. And I add a little sprinkle of something and I know that and I've realized that and mm -hmm. doors have opened. So look at this, I wrote a book. I went into lockdown. I decided to have, have fun. I started skipping to Rocky. I love Rocky. Who doesn't love Rocky? I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> A bloke of my era was in lockdown. Everyone's going, oh, I'm going to watch Vicar of Dibley and I'm going to watch, oh, put Rocky on. Get it on. <laughs> Get it on. And, and I, put, I put Rocky on. And before I knew it, I was eating healthily, naturally. I never thought I was overweight or anything like that. And I, I found something new, a new, uh, which was keto lifestyle. And weight dropped. Books were written. Um, people were meeting me. And the list is endless. What, where am I going? It's just it's amazing. I think, you know, I, I kind of know what's been going on. So and I know there is some secret stuff there and uh, definitely will lead on to, to more and more web uh, webinars and podcasts, I think, for, for the future. But um, Sheila, you've got a question for Sandy to round up. I haven't. I've, I've asked them all. Have you? <laughs> Make something up. <laughs> oh, we, got, we already got that. We've done Let's that. Let's talk football. Let's talk football. <laughs> we can't talk about Salford. Nobody wants to talk about Salford. Uh, <laughs> no, we got knocked out of the cup this week. We can't talk football. Oh. Um, right. I know that something that really gets on your nerves and that makes you cross is the amount of food waste that you see in the supermarkets, the fresh food. Um, I noticed you did a post the other night about all the um, reduced the yellow sticker price um, and it was all fresh food. But I think you've identified a gap because it's there because people don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to cook with it. They don't know what to create from it. But you do. Tell me about that. Well, it, it started with a, with a Facebook post again, just, just uh, highlighting the fact that there's a lot of food wastage and it, it, it saddens yeah. me to go to the supermarket and again, I have a routine because I do a lot of cooking and I do a lot of classes. So I literally know where to go. I go to a select few supermarkets in and out, obviously staying safe. You know, we got to think about all that. That's all in that. But the one thing that has been highlighted, and I see this a lot, the amount of processed food that is, when we talk processed food, um, there's loads of different ways of talking about processed food. It's not just a ready meal. Yeah, there's, there's things in there that to get, so for example, a whole chicken you buy a chicken that's a whole and then you take it and you dissect it and chop it and put it make it into other things that is not a processed meal that's a freshly cooked meal mm. uh, that's what i'm talking about uh, there was a time back in the day it's not even back in the days it's, it's very the wrong wording to use back in the day when you say back in the day you're thinking when we were peasants and we were all slopping out and in the mud no no this is quite recent this is really really recent all that's happened is, is that we've forgotten our way and people have just forgotten and not realized. And also education. I'm not going to lie to you. When Little Spice was born, uh, I thought uh, sugary drinks were bad, which we all did. And I only gave him diet. I only now know now in the last six months realized that that diet, um, sweetness stuff is actually worse. Yeah. 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 And, that's yeah. It. And, and it's just education. So I understand that people are not educated. And when I've been around food for the last 30, 40 years, the information that I'm going to have is going to be different because I'm an expert. I get that. So but can you bit... fix this gap in the market where people don't know what to do with the fresh fruit and so it's wasted on the shelves? They, they do know what to do. They, they just choose not to. And that's the problem. The, the biggest thing that is... Laziness? Are people lazy? 
Yeah, they've become really lazy. They, they've become really, really lazy. And it's like anything else. If you take something away from a person, you've got no choice, you know? I, I can't get the fairy liquid syndrome. When I was a general manager, I was a right nasty little piece of work, general manager, Sheila. You would love me. Events. Right? This, is called a, this is called a fairy liquid moment, right? You've got a big-ass jar of fairy liquid, right? You're going to use it all the time. He's like, ah. Yeah. You're your dishwasher. But do you remember when that when that fairy liquid has gone right down to the next to nothing? You could spin that out. You could have that last for ages. Yeah, that's true. Ages. How yeah. is that possible? Because you focus. You focused on that. You know yeah. what you're doing. And it's same with the food. People do do know how to cook. They just choose not to. Obviously, there is an element of people that genuinely do not know how to cook, and that is the the other added thing. So what I've done, after reading these posts, and there was a lot of angry people on there, a lot of the anger was towards me saying, um, you don't know what it's like, um, you don't know this, and they don't know that I'm a child of the 80s grew, growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Growing up in Longsight, you know, I hard knocks where we didn't have a lot of things, you know what I mean? They don't, people yeah. don't realise, been there, seen it, done it. I remember sitting in uh, Howard Reeves' house having 1,000 to 1 stew. This was called 1,000 to 1 stew. And I ate it and I asked the mother, I said, why is it called 1,000 to 1 stew? She goes, there's 1,000 to 1 chance, 1,000 to 1 chance there's any bloody meat in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a story. <laughs> but that's, a, that's so funny you say that because when I went to a friend's house, my mum used to cook fresh all the time and I've been cooking fresh since I was five years old. So I was very privileged growing up with mm. good food around me and cooks all the time. Exactly. I, but I was eating, I went to my friend's, you'll laugh at this, do you remember when microchips came out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I thought they were the best thing ever. And I went to my friend. I said, Mum, please buy those. No, no, no. Radiation, da, da, da. Anyway, went to my mate's house. And she gave me the microchips with a big pork chop shoved in it with some ketchup. And do you know what? I still remember that to this day. as the best meal I ever had as a child. <laughs> <laughs> all the health went out the window <laughs> but again again when i talk about cooking again going back to basics I'm, mm. I'm not saying let's go out in the fields hunt the food bring it back slaughter it and, and start no 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 i'm even saying as basic as this right somebody asked me the other night what is one of your favorite meals and this is true i, I don't eat, eat it anymore because of the lifestyle i, I lead but I used to love double egg and chips and beans. Mm, mm. But you can do you it now with sweet chips, can't you? Yeah, no, it's sweet. Ah, no. no. No, no, no. It's bad because look at the word that's in front of the word for sweet potato. The word oh, sweet. sweet. Sweet, I said. Oh, sweet, sweet. Sorry, sorry. Yes, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> sorry. But, the, but at the same time, I remember that was home cooked. You no, know, nice eggs cooked in butter or yeah. some nice oil. Yeah. Yeah. Homemade chips. The only thing that was probably not homemade which is a, wasn't a bad thing was the can of baked beans but even then when you cook that beans and you put it in that pan and you put that pan on the stove it's completely different to put it in the microwave yeah it's evocative right. is the, yeah, when you do it and you stir it with a spoon yeah. my mum used to put butter in the beans as well some people yeah. put cheese Jeez, it's yeah. a northern <laughs> thing i think i don't know <laughs> she's nodding her head like that <laughs> <laughs> so i'm talking about that I'm not saying nouvelle cuisine. I'm saying, let's come on, guys. You can make chips, mm. right? During the 70s, somebody said that um, chip pans were terrible. Every chip, every northerner back in the day used to have a chip pan. Okay. Then something happened and we got rid of it. Bring back the chip pan. Bring it back. Why not? <laughs> so with that, with that, what I'm doing is every Monday, a free, I am doing on uh, Facebook, uh, social media, uh, a free class for all, uh, anyone who wants to join. Um, I was going to say for people that can't cook and underprivileged people who have the issues, you know what, sod that, it's an open door for everyone. Rich, poor, young, old, black, white, whatever, whoever you are, come and join, learn how to make some food, and I'm going to do basics. So, for example... Well, I'm going to come along and watch that. I've watched your uh, videos on Facebook before, and they're really, really good. They're really um, good, yeah. And I'm going to do a cook along... And I'm also going to put the ingredients out there so people can cook along with me. So that's a brilliant basic idea. stuff. So how yeah. to make an Italian tomato sauce. Mm. And, and, and literally I'm going to say how cheap it is. And on this really one last bombshell, this is to prove how bad it is. There are particular companies out there that make certain sauces. You'll know who they are. 
One yeah. begins with D, one begins with R, right? If you read the back of the, the, the jar and read the ingredients and actually read the disclaimer, it actually tells you not to eat more than two of these a week. What's that telling you? Mm. Exactly. Tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? There you go. So <clears throat> I think we're coming to the end of this now, but there's so much we could talk about. Um, but tell us when your cookery thing is, Sandy, the free one. What day and time? Monday. To be quite honest, I got an interview with the BBC Radio Leicester and a few other interviews with a few other show, uh, media people. Um, again, there's no monetary gain in, in this. And it, there's no monetary gain in, in half of the things I'm doing, to be quite honest. Um, it's, a, it's a personal personal mission, personal, to prove to people that food can save you if you do it right and healthily mm. and it can change your life. You don't, I mean... You, I see those turmeric adverts where you get, they get a really cool American Hollywood actor, you know, and he goes to his fridge and he takes out this turmeric shot and it's 15, 20 pounds and it's changed his life. <laughs> you know, guess what? My mum's got raw uh, turmeric powder in a spice jar. Why buy this 20 quid stuff? Why? Yeah. You know, why? Yeah. I don't get it. Oh, you're spot on. Spot on. <laughs> Maybe I should walk around with some powdered turmeric in a bag like that. Hey, look at this turmeric. <laughs> it's, it's it's one of the, the it, it's one of the best spices that god ever gave us but it really thing, is you know what and again eventually as time will go on there are approximately 30 spices there's not many spices it's not like a thing like it's loads loads there's, there's no. approximately um if you're going to the other realms no more than about 30 spices and once you get your head around every single one they've mm. all got an amazing magical quality that can do lots of different things in different ways so we can learn how to cook with you. We can, you can still selling the spices, are you? Of course, all through the Keto Fitness Club. Uh, new blends, new books, um, everything through there. What's the I website? How can people find those things? Uh, www.ketofitnessclub. And uh, I'll also put a link in as well for you to uh, put at the bottom. It's all on there. Brilliant. And www thespiceguide.uk which will redirect you to the uh, to purchase anything you want to purchase any information there's also free stuff lots of free free recipes there it's not it's not a sales pitch you choose if you choose you want to buy you buy you don't want to buy you want to even message me and have a quick chat guess what do it just give me a, give me half an hour notice you always reply to my messages always Thank yeah and mine eventually eventually sorry <laughs> but do you not think there's so many different avenues i've tried to condense it because you've got messenger you've got whatsapp you've got yeah. uh people that do it on pages where's that all out about pages mm. i mean what's next i'm gonna have a pigeon turn up one day and this is another, there's another <laughs> message there for me. well look it's been really lovely to speak to you again and catch up and we're very pleased what's how your career is is evolving um and, and long may it continue and uh, we'd we very you. much like to sort of i think we reconvene once a month we'll probably put it in the diary um after this uh after we've stopped recording and we'll just keep keep um tabs on you really yeah, absolutely and, 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 yeah. and one little small final note um i choose the right people around you and i have to say that the two people on this call uh, are not only supported we've supported each other as well and it's a two-way thing it's never been a one-way thing so if people are out there in business saying, yeah, get support, support is just not, you don't just take, you've got to give as well. It's, it's yeah. two way. And, we, and the three of us pretty much can hold our hands up that we've all done that. Yeah. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, well, I, we've all... Yeah. Let's catch up and have some more Northern soul. Hey. Yay. Well, listen guys, thanks a lot. I'm going to press the end record in a second um, and we'll come back in a month's time and reconvene and see what you've been up to Sandy. Have a lovely Thank Christmas, you. my darling. Thank you. You, Thank you so all. much. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Happy Christmas, everybody.